Just got back from a book run. Got a big old box of books. We'll start with the Salvation Army. I got this AR-15 guide. Rifle Builder's Manual for if you want to build an AR-15. I don't know how much it was, I think two bucks, but hot seller on Amazon, which is where that's gonna go. Same place I got a copy of Quake 2 Arena or Quake 3 Arena in good shape. These are not actually worth that much, maybe 10 to 13 bucks, but simply by merit of the fact that it's a PC game, it's easy money. Got a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers preview CD for something called The White Album. And we're getting to the meat of the book soon. This is very rare. I don't know how much it's worth, but there are sold comps in the audio tape version, uh, a bunch of them. And then uh, they called out five minutes left before they closed unexpectedly. And I managed to rush through the book section and find a first edition of the Born Identity hardcover from Robert Ludlum. Not something that I'm gonna read, but is potentially worth about 50 bucks. I brought all this stuff up to the counter and I laid it out. And I said to the guy, I said, wow, I just realized this makes me look like a psychopath. Um, and thankfully he thought it was funny. On the way to the thrifts, I stopped at a place called Book Off that has really cheap books. It's basically a thrift store, but it's curated, so it's not quite as fun. But I still managed to pull out a $1 copy of Pandora's Star. I got the Dreaming Void in the last haul video. And this, this I think, is supposed to be his opus, his uh, best, most read book. First in a series. Big, fat, thousand-page space opera. And I couldn't believe I found this. This is a book I own. It's quite rare. It's the second in the Starhammer series, I think it's called. The first book is Starhammer, at least. And this is a book I actually was planning on doing a review of because it's one of the gnarliest, most disgustingly violent sci-fi books I've read. And I found it because I was scouring Reddit for recommendations for science fiction horror books that were kind of in the same vein as Alien and the Thing, and very few of them. They're basically non-existent which is a, a big disappointment because that's, of all of sci-fi, sci-fi horror is probably my favorite genre, and this fits the bill. It is a very bad book, not very well written, but the last quarter of it or so is just revolting. Uh, just so wonderfully gross and uh, horrifying. And worth the read. So if that's if that's your kind of perversion as well, then um, maybe look up this book, and I'll do a full breakdown of it at some point. It was two and a half bucks, and I don't remember how much these are selling for, but should at least be able to make my money back. I don't. I I already own it, but I just couldn't not buy this, and it's also in better condition than the one that I have. All right, and then this last bit of the haul is from another Goodwill bookstore, not the one that I went to two days ago, but an, a different one. Not terribly exciting. This is just a pulp sci-fi that's worth around 15 on Amazon. So I picked it up. This was exciting. This is the sequel to Thon by Piers Anthony, which I just reviewed. I'm definitely gonna keep this to read. I'm curious. Um, although I don't know, it's in such great shape. I'll probably look it up before I actually sell it. The cover art's pretty wonderful as well. Kathan, you know, nobody reads, and this one, certainly, absolutely nobody reads. So, this is on the docket. This was wild. This is one of my favorite moments in my entire history of reselling. I was walking past the children's section in this bookstore, the Goodwill bookstore, and I, I just, like, I never look at the kids' books at all, and I just had this thought, like, remember when you used to look for World of Power Nintendo books when you were a kid? I would, whenever we went to the library bookstore, I would scour through the children's books for those. I said, just take a look and see what you find. Immediately, I find one of the most valuable rare ones. This is the novelization of the original Metal Gear for, Nintendo, for NES. And then I kept poking around and I found this one, 
Blaster Master, which uh, I also had when I was a kid. I've read both of these when I was, I think, single digits years old. Um, Uh-oh, that one has a little fold in the cover. That's okay. Oh, wow. It even has the part of the insert still in it. Both of them do. This one's worth at least 50, and this, this one probably isn't that far behind. Uh, it's probably worth around 30, I would guess. I didn't look it up, but just weird. Just immediately, almost like a lucid dream. It just, it was, there it was. I looked and there it was. And then I also got the complete works of Alistair Reynolds. <laughs> All lined up in a row in the sci-fi section. It was pretty wild. This is not all of them. I'll go through them. This might literally be the collected works. I'm not sure if this is totally complete. So Diamond Dogs, Turquoise Days. And these were all $2. And they're all mass markets. Century Rain, haven't heard of that one. Absolution Gap, which is the sequel to uh, uh, Revelation Space. Okay, so this is the second one, Redemption Arc. And then I think this is the third one. So I have the complete uh, Revelation Space series or whatever the proper term for it is. And I was probably going to get around to reading these eventually, so that might have just expedited it. And apparently this one is supposed to be better than Revelation Space, which I liked but didn't love. Terminal World. Pushing Ice. The Prefect. Galactic North, Chasm City, which I think is a prequel to Revelation Space, House of Suns, Revelation Space and hard copy. I read it on Kindle, but might as well. And that was it for Alistair Reynolds. I just, I couldn't not buy it. It was all there. Uh, Alistair Reynolds, not, I, I like what I read of Revelation Space, I don't know that I, I'm going to read all of those, but those can all go in a big lot and sell for some decent money if I choose not to keep them, but I probably will just to have them. And uh, last book, Cryptonomicon by Neil Stevenson. I was so turned off by the meta nonsense of the hero protagonist that I just wrote off Neil Stevenson. And then a friend who's taste I trust actually told me that Necronomicon was worth reading so now I have it it cost me two bucks oh those uh world of power worlds of power books cost a dollar each pretty amazing pretty worth it I don't know I probably made a little bit of money this was more just for fun get out of the apartment and it paid off it's amazing how often uh it actually does pay off so thanks for watching